Hey guys, it's Greg Jones for Engine Builder, and today we're at Summit Diesel in Weatherford, Texas. I'm joined by shop owner Alex Knoll. Between us here is a 6.4 liter power stroke, and it's our Diesel of the Week. Engine Builder's Diesel of the Week is sponsored by Amsoil, the first in synthetics. Alex, thanks so much for up, uh, having us in the shop today, checking out everything that you guys have going on here at Summit Diesel. And uh, of course, one of those things here is your personal engine here, this 6.4 liter Power Stroke. And uh, it's a pretty sweet little piece here that you're going to get back out in the track here shortly after uh, a, hi a hiatus from racing. Yeah. So if you would, tell the folks a little bit of background on this engine and you know what it used to be and, and why it's kind of apart and getting put back together again. Well, um, I had a customer that abandoned a vehicle here. Uh, the bank called and wanted to uh, know how much the bill was. Well, the truck had already been here for so long that I started charging a storage fee. Yeah. I couldn't get a hold of anybody. So when the bank finally called, I, I gave them this number and I don't remember what the number was, but it was pretty high. Yeah. And the bank said, you know what? We'll just send you the title. I said, okay. And so I ended up with the, the, the vehicle and uh, I knew the engine had a problem. We tore it down. Um, it was going to be a lot to fix it. Well, at the same time, I had just bought another truck with a bad engine that I, couldn't be fixed. I mean, the block was trash. The head was trash on one side. Um, and so I was like, man, this will be a perfect donor truck. And so my first plan was, hey, let's get truck number one going and then we'll flip it and make, make some money. My wife ended up seeing the truck after it was almost done and was like, ah, I kind of want that truck. And I was like, well, I was like, are you sure? And yeah. she's like, yeah. And I was like, well, I'll build you an engine for it. So we pulled the engine out. Uh, it needed cam, lifters, front cover. I mean, all the normal stuff that, you know, goes bad when uh, lifter bearings come out. Right. So <clears throat> I said, well, I said, do you want it to go fast? And she was, well, of course I want it to go fast. I said, well, all right. So I called up, uh, RCD performance and uh, out of Illinois. And I said, Hey, I said, I need, you know, fly cut pistons, stage two cam. I need billet push rods. I think they call them chromoly push rods, but yeah. Um, I said, I need all the goodies to put a six, four back together. And they're like, all right, man, we got you. And so I put the engine together. Um, we did stock K 16 pump with um, some 10% over injectors. Uh, the truck made pretty good power. Um, last year at Texas truck jam, I think on the dyno, it made, um, right under 500 horsepower. Okay. And um, it was hot, it was humid that day, but I mean, it is what it is. Nobody ever makes what they wanna make on the dyno. Right, right. But uh, truck st engine started making some noise and I had just bought a 2019 uh, Power Stroke Dually and my wife was like, oh, take all the time you need. Oh, of course, you wanna drive a new <laughs> truck, I got it. So we tore the engine down and found that we had broke um, an oil ring on one of the pistons. So I tore it all the way apart and I was like, well, you know, here's what we need to do. We need to board out. We're going to a bigger piston or whatever. And, and um, I ended up, a buddy of mine called and was like, hey, I've got a bunch of core 6.4 engines. Do you want them? Yeah. I'm like, sure. So I drove down to San Antonio and picked them up. And uh, so now I've got this one that's tore down. And I was like, well, I've got this other truck's been sitting out here for a couple of years we could do something with. So I took one of the core motors, standard size piston. Um, it's in the engine room. And so I'm going to build her. A more of a, a factory engine that um, possibly could li live a little bit longer. Sure. And then we'll take this one that we've already put a bunch of the goodies in and we'll put it in the race truck and see what happens. Yeah. Awesome. So, awesome. Yeah. So Alex, you know, run us through what, what you got in the engine right now um, in terms of wanting to make more power and then exactly what the truck is outside there that you're talking about. Uh, it's a 2008 um, F-250 extended cab short bed, four wheel drive. Okay. Um, yeah, we're gonna race it in four-wheel drive. The engine itself has a RCD stage two cam. Okay. Uh, it's got uh, Johnson lifters in it. It's got fly cut D-lip coated pistons. I like to do the D-lip pistons because that's where the, the heat from the injector spray is where that, that lip starts to crack. Yeah. And then once the crack, it'll just keep going and that's where, you know, six fours get that, that um, known issue of a, of a broke piston. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we do the D-lip pistons. Um, it is a stage two, you don't have to do the fly cut. Um, at the time I built this engine the first time, we didn't have um, 
upgraded valve springs. And so I, it was easy enough to fly cut the pistons yeah. to accommodate for a little bit of valve float. So um, now we have heavy duty valve springs, but this time around, it's gonna go a little bit further. We've got a dual fueler kit from RCD with ported fuel rails. Yeah. Um, we've got 30% over injectors. Okay. Um, I got a pretty good deal on the injectors. We should have went bigger, 60 to 100%, but it's what you can afford right now. Yeah. Um, we got a bunch of other little goodies. Um, we're gonna go from the factory compound turbo setup to a uh, bigger single. Okay. Um, I called uh, my buddy Riley at Evil Fab. They're right down the road. They're about 30 minutes down the road. Okay. They make those sick second gen swap kits for the Cummins. Well, he keeps turbos in stock also. So if I need a turbo in a hurry, I just, hey man, what you got? Yeah. And so he said, man, I've got a billet center section, billet wheel, dual ball bearing, um, 472.87. And uh, so I'm hoping to make some pretty good power with that, that air fuel combo. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. And, and about how much boost do you think you're gonna have to uh, run through that or, or what's your expectation? Um, we expectations probably 60. Okay. Yeah. 60. 60 is about is probably top of the yeah. top of the realm where I kind of want to be. Right. Um later on we'll probably do a wastegate. Okay. And wastegate it at 50. Yeah. Just so it lives. Yeah. You know, that that's the whole key is to not have to pull the engine out after yeah. every race. Yeah, for sure. But um sure. man, these cool. engines they they hold up. They hold a lot of power. Yeah. Um and you know, this is very similar to a 6.0 uh, is, is the block in, in the bottom end, they, they, we've held a bunch. Yeah. I mean, we've made a thousand on the dyno with, with a six Oh with a stock bottom end. Okay. Yeah. And this still has a stock crank in this one. This has a stock yeah. crank. Um, and what about the rods, these are stock rods. Okay. We've got another set that we cryogenically treated that we've never messed with that before. Yeah. And so we'll see what, what happens with those, but we just do the ARP rod cap bolts. Yep. Um, we do ARP, pretty much every bolt in the bottom end is ARP and they stay together. Yeah. I mean, we beat awesome. the brains off of a couple of six O's yeah. in the last couple of race seasons. Yeah. I had no issues with these bottom ends. Very cool. All right. So with this six, four and the single turbo, um, you know, what are the expectations for the truck now, um, once you get it back together in terms of horsepower. And, and I think you mentioned racing it in the 770 class. Yeah, so, um, 770 class is kind of the biggest class, but it's that's the reason it's the biggest class because that's the safest horsepower, you know? So what you do, in my opinion, um, you make what you can make with, with your, you know, what you can afford, right? And so right now um, with everything we got going on in the shop, um, it makes the most sense to be in the 600, uh, to high sevens yeah. with this truck. Yeah. And then uh, we'll start doing a little weight reduction to accommodate for, to get that, uh, that eighth mile time down. Yeah, so. awesome. Now, Alex, I also noticed you got some Amsoil back here. Are you guys an Amsoil shop and, and is that what you're running the engine? We are an Amsoil dealer. Yeah. Um, I've been an Amsoil dealer for, man, almost uh, seven years, six okay. years. Yeah. And nice. um, man, it's, it's a great product. Um, we've sent multiple oil analysis out, had them run and uh, versus a whole bunch of different oils. But Amsoil seems to come out on top every time. Yeah. Um, in a stock application, it, I mean, they have an oil that'll run 25,000 miles and you just change the filter every five. I mean, it's a great, it's great stuff. Yeah. Um, we change it um, after we get back from every race, just so we can see metal content and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. Um, so the silver bottle works better for us. Okay. Um, but we, I try to talk every customer into Amazon oil change. I mean, it's, yeah. it's good stuff. Yeah, excellent. Alex, anything else about your 6.4 that we haven't touched on or just anything else that you want to add about, you know, what you got going in the build? <clears throat> you know, you asked earlier um, about uh, tech tips or tricks. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think one of the biggest thing that 6.0s and 6.4s have are oil leaks. And um, to combat the oil leaks, um, what we do when we have the bed plate off that holds the crankshaft in, it's two tiny strips of gasket. And dude, I'd probably say they last about 20,000 miles and then they'll start seeping. Right. And then you'll notice, you'll look through the fender well and you'll see on top of the, the windage tray, you'll see, you know, it's, it looks kind of wet and then the dirt sticks to it and it makes mud. We put a thin line of Motorcraft gray silicone on the top of them. So we put them in the bed plate yeah. um, and then we do our, uh, or excuse me, we put them in the, yeah, put them in the bed plate put a thin strip of silicone and then we torque it down immediately and then we'll let it sit overnight. 
Yeah. And then we'll come back the next day to finish the bottom end. Nice. Um, that helps with that oil leak. But at the same time, uh, we do um, uh, a crankcase uh, vent reroute. Yeah. And so we, uh, instead of routing the crankcase gases, gases back into the turbo and dirtying the turbo up, we run them into a catch can. Okay. And so the catch can catches it and then uh, vents to the atmosphere. And these have been a lifesaver in uh, keeping the, the valve covers from leaking, the rear main right. seals from right. leaking. It's, the 6.4s are known to make a bunch of blow by because of the compound turbo setup. So hopefully we don't have any more issues out of this engine as far right. as oil leaks. Right. But for most of our other customers that, that we build a 6.4.4, we don't have any issues after we, yeah. we upgrade a few things, a little silicone here, factory gaskets, front rear main seal. Yeah. Good to go. Awesome. Very cool. Well, Alex, you know, like you were saying, it's been a couple of years since you've had this out there on the track and, and doing the racing thing. So I know you're excited to get it back together and get it out there. And we appreciate you telling us a little yes, bit sir. about it. Guys, we appreciate you watching this episode of Diesel of the Week. Make sure you're checking out everything that Alex has going on here at Summit Diesel. And as always, make sure you're checking out EngineBuilderMag.com for more great engine and diesel content. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.